everyone, welcome. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see the slide. How's everyone doing today? <coughs> can you see Kathy? Great. I'm gonna get started here, so welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me know if you can hear me. If you have any questions, you can just write it in the room, right where I just put hi, and then I can read the question as we go along and answer the question throughout the lecture. Hope everyone is having a great week. It's Tuesday, it's earning season. <coughs> Excuse me, no big earnings out tonight that I'm watching, but tomorrow morning for sure, Boeing reports. And tomorrow, the market could be wild because Mueller is testifying. So it's an exciting week to be trading. And for those of you that don't know what I do, I trade my own system, a system that I created. It seems like a long time ago now. I started trading in 2008. It is almost 2020, which is crazy, um, but it is. We've got less than six months till Christmas, and all of a sudden it will be January 1st, 2020. So I've been doing what I do for a very long time. And I know there's a lot of people that have been out there trading more years than I have, but I only do one thing. So I think for me, I'm kind of an anomaly where I literally only do this one thing that I created and nothing else. So tonight I'm gonna to talk about a day trade and options trades, but it's the same system. The same system that I use for anything that I do. Doesn't matter if it's for five minutes, five days, it doesn't matter if it's an option or an intraday day trade, which by the way, you can day trade options, okay? So whether equity trade or option trade, swing trade, long-term reads on stocks, which I do as well, either way, I'm only looking for the gap, okay? And for those of you that don't know what a gap is, a gap is a difference between the close and the open, and we'll go over that tonight. Any questions here before we get started? And if you would like a trial for the trading room this week, there's only three more days left, but it should be a good week. You can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. And if you have questions, again, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. So I, I, I've been doing this, like I said, for about 11 years, going on 12, and I've had the business for seven, going on eight. And I've talked to a lot of people, in fact, I talked to three separate people this afternoon, um, new people that I've talked to about trading. Some people are new to trading. Some people have been trading for a long time. Whether someone has never traded at all before or not really doesn't necessarily put you ahead of the game. So if you're brand, brand new, you have all the benefit of coming to me because you're gonna learn what I know and not have any bad habits. For people that have traded in the past and come to me, sometimes they have to unlearn bad habits that they have in order to become successful. So I don't think if you have any experience, it necessarily gives you a leg up. And I don't think if you have no experience, it means that you can't get it right off the bat, okay? It is about having the right information. It is about having the right knowledge. And that knowledge gives you the conviction. And this is something that I utilize when I'm taking a trade or looking at a chart or determining where I want to enter or even exit a trade or how long I want to hold it or whether or not I even like it at all, okay? I really don't second guess myself really ever. It's rare that I would happen to do that. And, uh, and I'm one of those unique people where I'm very, very strong-minded in my belief system about whether a stock is going to rally, in which case we go long it, or whether it is gonna drop, in which case we'd short it to make money. And again, you can do either way you can do calls and puts for options or you can do day trades where you buy the stock or short the stock okay but conviction is a very very important part of what i do when i see something i never never think that it won't work now while some trades actually lose that i call some do i never believe that they will okay so in my mind, when I'm seeing the setup, when I'm seeing the stock, I believe 100% that it's gonna work. And again, that is a unique belief system because then I don't second guess myself and I don't hesitate when I'm taking the tree. So that, that conviction, that belief system, because that's what conviction is, it's a belief system, it's a knowing, it's a trust that I have in myself and my own judgment. And that comes from experience, but it also comes through education. I've taught myself how to read charts. 
And so when I read price action, I trust my judgment and I trust my read on that. And if you come and you want to learn from me, that's what you'd learn. You'd learn the system that I teach, but you'd also learn to trust yourself. It doesn't mean you'll never make a mistake, but learning how to trust yourself is very important, okay? And then if you do make a mistake, you'll realize it and you'll correct it for the next time around. But trusting yourself is important. This was a really, really nice call. This was Netflix, okay? This is a chart of Netflix here, and I went back from last week. Netflix had earnings, but it didn't have what I thought it would initially the first day, the move that I thought. It's, it's doing it in the last several days now. The move followed through. But a gap is the difference between the close and the open. So this is a day chart of Netflix. And again, I didn't show today in here, but this goes back to the previous day before the day of the earnings. The stock was up here around 362 and gap down here to around 325 and change. So this is a gap. Stocks can gap up, they can gap down. In the case here of Netflix, the stock gap down. Anyways, what do I do? In the pre-market, or even the post-market, like I could do it tonight if there was something tonight that I liked, I rate the gap and that's the system that I use. And that's what you learn from me. And I use that information in the pre-market and the post-market and seeing the gap itself to determine if I wanna go long the stock or if I wanna short it, okay? And that's the genius because I'm figuring it out ahead of time. Again, it doesn't matter if you do it at night or if you do it in the morning. It is the idea of the prep work, the preparation, okay? Talk about conviction. Having yourself being a totally, totally, totally uh, prepared really helps you trade well, okay? Because then you're not looking willy-nilly at stuff on the live day trying to figure out, do I do this one? Do I do that one? Do I go long? Do I go short? Whatever, okay? So anyways, Netflix was a short called puts in it, and we did it as a day trade. I'm going to go over that here. But some day traders and some long-term traders bought Netflix. You can see because the stock here was green, okay? This green body indicates buying. And the stock open here fell, rallied, and actually got bought. At one point, the stock was at the price of the stock was at close to 330, okay? So there were buyers in here on Netflix on that day. But the move to get was to the downside and it's a short. And I'll show you a chart later where that really went. And getting to the point that I'm trying to say is what my system does, and again, this is why this is a great system, is I'm looking for institutional money. I'm not looking for what regular traders are doing. In fact, very often we are going against regular traders, which is fine by me. I'm going with institutional money when I'm predicting the movement of a stock because that is what moves stocks. Simple day traders cannot move a stock like Netflix. Now they did temporarily for the temporary time that the stock rallied in that brief, brief period of that day, but they did not overall. How do I know? Because Netflix has continued to fall ever since that gap from last week. In fact, it's gonna break 300. It's just a question of when. I didn't see how that closed actually today, but it's headed down. So it's the theory, the theory in the system of what I'm doing is looking for institutional money. Now, if you don't know what institutional money is, it's hedge funds, big, big traders, big banks that take huge, massive sizes in stocks. And there's some big reports this week, okay? There is Google, there is Amazon, and those stocks, I'm sure you're familiar with the companies in those names, they're heavily traded by what? By institutions, okay? Now here is a chart of institutional money that moved the stock higher called call in this. This is BYND. In fact, I've called a ton of calls in this in the last two months. In fact, every trade that I've called in this stock has worked but one. I've lost track of how many. Either I've called 12 or 13 or 14. I've called, I've called, I've called, I might have called 14 trades in this stock in the last two months. One trade has failed that I've called in this and all the trades I've called. So this is a, this has been a big winner. And not only that, it's had Jimongo moves, okay? And, uh, and it's really fun to trade. One of the reasons it's fun to trade is it has big moves and the moves happen fast. And guess what? As an active day trader, or an active, even if you're, if you're not active where you trade in and out in minutes, even if you're in something on a Monday and out of something on a Tuesday, that's still a fast move, okay? When overall, when you look at something. 
And don't forget, day trading or even options trading when you're in and out in something, you're booking money. It's not long-term investing. But BYND is higher. BYND made a brand new all-time high today. BYND today got up to 208, close to 209, 210 dream target. BYND was getting bought. Okay, so institutions came in, stock gapped up here, rallied again, made a new high today, up close to 209. So this, you look at it and say, woo, that has institutions buying the stock. So I called a call on this yesterday. It was late and it still worked and was a great trade, flew over the high. And called one last week, which I think a couple people kept. But anyways, it's important to understand that day trading really doesn't have any overnight risk. You need cash to day trade, you'll trade with margin, but you're in, out, in, out. You could be in at 9.32 and out at 9.35. You could be in at 9.40, you could be out by 9.46. Nobody said you even have to hold the trade from 9.30 to 4 or 3.59. You are taking a trade and you were in and out before the close, but you could be in and out at a minute the way that I trade, especially if you're following me. The idea is to get in to out. It's consistent booking of money. And someone asked me about this today. It's not really return on investment when you're looking at day trades, because if you look at it that way, it'd be hundreds and hundreds of percent some days. It's the idea that it's, it's a risk to reward. So I typically tell people one is what you're looking for, one turnover. So for example, if you would be risking $500 per trade, what is your goal each trade? 500 bucks. Some days you will not make 500. Some days you will make 425. That's close enough. Some days you will make 760. Just by virtue of being in the trade from where I call it and I'm watching the stock move. But the point is on average, that should be where you're targeting yourself to be, okay? And I do use stops for those of you that are not familiar with, with what I do. Uh, and if you're brand, brand new, again, this is important to learn this in the class because I think stops are important in day trading. It's like the insurance that protects you. But day trading is not investing. It's, you, are, you are pulling money out of the market uh, and, and that's what you're doing. And you're just pulling it out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as many days as you can get good trades, okay? Any questions so far? It's fast moves, not investing. So I think it's good for people, if they have goals, to take the amount of cash that you have and then determine what your risk will be per trade, then what you need your goal to be every day and break it down. So like, for example, if you are, can afford to risk $500 a trade, that would be an average of what, $2,500 a week. But you may not make 500 Monday, 500 Tuesday, 500 Wednesday, 500 Thursday, 500 Friday. It's an average. Monday, you might not do anything. Tuesday, you may take a trade, you may make a thousand. Do you see how it goes? So it's on average, and I think it helps people process these numbers to try to make a living trading by looking at each week or each month, and it helps them process the whole year. Any questions so far from anyone? Snap is up. Uh, I'll take a look at that. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying here about Netflix, okay? Netflix has had a tremendous move, and it is because the stock is falling off a cliff. So as a trader, how do you make money? You gotta get the direction right with the institutions. And if you do, it's so easy to profit, but you have to know the direction that it's gonna go. And like I said, people were long Netflix after the gap down on the earnings. And that was a bad trade. You would have lost money if you had gone long Netflix, okay? Netflix was a short. Now here was the day trade in Netflix. I'm gonna walk you through it. This is an advanced trader risk, but we will go over a beginner trader risk as well. Share size, 1,000 shares. Entry, 326.10. Again, I call this in the room. Stop was 328.50. This is not small, but you have to look at the price point of the stock and you still size yourself correctly. So 1,000 shares would have been a risk of 2,400 bucks. This is an advanced risk. Now you could have taken 500 shares, risk 1,200. You still would have had a great day. Total profit, $5,550. So looking at the risk to reward, it was over two because you risked 2,400 and you made 5,550. And again, if you had taken 500 shares, you would have risked 1,200 and made about 20, 
2,500 and change, okay? So the point is you're looking for a move, risk to reward, risk to reward, okay? Now here was the trade. Stock closed here, gap down, open, rally, boom. And actually, we didn't, we weren't even aggressive on this. Here's the rally that happened initially. Here's 9.30, here's the open. We did this over here. It was a beautiful call. And then it dropped, boom. So you could have taken it here, shorted it. This is a short. You would have shorted it here and got out. Or you could have shorted it here and you could have held it, okay? Either way, this is a one minute chart. So when I'm day trading, I'm looking to trade on a one minute chart. I'm in and I'm out, I'm in and I'm out. Any questions about this so far? Now let's look at a beginner. Beginner could have taken 100 shares. You say, well, 100 shares, what's that gonna do? Well, you could have made 555 bucks with 100 shares on Netflix. Why? The stock moves. It moves, 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 just like BYND. You don't have to take some monster size in these stocks because they move. I love playing stocks that move. In fact, I hate playing stocks that don't move. I prefer to trade stocks that move. It's more fun, you make more money. And it really, when you think about it, again, size is great if you can afford to take the risk. If you can risk $2,000 plus or whatever, take the size. But if you cannot, if you cannot, you can take a small size in something, 100 shares, 200 shares, 300 shares, and still make good profit. And that's the, that's the difference what I do and what other people are, are trying to talk to people about, about trading low float stocks or these penny stocks or dirt cheap stocks so they can take thousands and thousands of shares. That can be very, very risky, okay? Uh, and you could still get stuck in something or it could get halted, okay? I, I, I mean, all, or your stop may not hold or you may not even get filmed to get out, out, even if you're up. By the time you try to exit the trade, if you're up, you could actually move the stock and you could actually move it in your position by moving it by getting out. And then you're not up and you're getting out worse or losing. So it's ridiculous. The only way to consistently really be profitable, if whether you have a small account or whether you have a big account, and by small I mean $2,500, not 500 bucks, is if you are trading stocks that have moves big moves that's how you get the risk to reward that's how you can take a small account and turn it into a big account rather quickly it's the precision in the entries and again i'm looking for the right pick which in this case was netflix <laughs> any questions so far by anyone so it all comes down to really just the focus for me one system one strategy one pick one 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 i just narrow it down i'm i'm like a hundred percent focused on whatever i'm doing at that very given moment like 150 percent and that is how i do it okay and again i have confidence in myself confidence in the system and i don't second guess myself and that's something that i think is important and once you learn that and understand that it helps you do better as a trader any questions here so far Any questions about Netflix, day trading, anything? So here is here was Netflix again, right after the day that it gapped down, closed here, gapped down, fell. Here's where it sold off then the second day down. So this was Thursday, this was Friday, okay? I called, this was on the Thursday, okay? puts in netflix now in order to get these trades you would have had to be on the options newsletter it's a subscription service that i have uh that's an annual service but i call these trades based on my rating system again same system so i called the netflix puts strike 320 and this fell well through it expiring at friday you could still be in this trade i don't i don't think anyone is uh but netflix is still falling fall 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 and again the beauty about trading options is you don't have to worry about margin because this is an expensive stock number one and number two uh you only have to get it in the right movement so in other words this did run through and fell through 320. like i said i don't know what the low was today but at one point it was at 308 and the thing is you don't have to get an option if you take it at the perfect time 
to the strike or even through the strike to make money. If you get it at the right time, getting it into the strike is all that you need. And in this case here, this was a put. So this is, this is that's what a short is in the case of an option. Anyways, cost was 580, 13 contracts. Again, this is a little pricing. Risk 75.40, exit eight. And this, this continued. Like I said, this continued. So this was an exit from taking it Thursday, exiting it Friday, which I thought was a solid, solid move. But anyways, this continued Monday and this continued today. And it's still lower. And you could still be in this trade. I'll have to send out an email to the letter to see who's in it. Anyways, $2,860. Take it one day, exit the next day, boom. Or if you held it, you got a bigger move. In fact, I'll pull up the Netflix chart to see where we closed today after go over these. Now this was an option too. I call the Netflix put, put strike 325. This was last week, so you had to exit this one. It, this was profitable. Cost 320, 20 contracts, 60 per 100, exit 620, profit 6,000. When you do something close to the strike, you got to get it on the day or into the next day. This was an unusual circumstance, so where I will tell you, you could have held it into the very last day because the stock continued falling. Nice move in Netflix again. We go back here. This is the drop off. Boop. And in this case here again, went right through the 325 number. Okay. This was the 330 puts. This was a little pricey, but again, you could still be in this. Falling, falling, falling. I should look up what this was today, actually. Uh, 1170 cost, six contracts. Again, in advance risk, 7,020. Exit 1550. Profit 2,280. So this is three trades in and out from Thursday to Friday, plus the day trade in Netflix. And this is an advanced risk, okay? You do not have to take this risk in these trades, this number of contracts, you could take less. But you can see how the focus on one thing, one chart, that's it. Multiple trades in one stock using one system, and that's it. And you boom, boom, boom. And this also allows you actually to be a little bit flexible about how you manage the trades if you want to spread them out. So you could have taken the puts, uh, the options, and you could have gotten out of all of them last week, or you could have gotten out of one, held the rest, or vice versa, uh, held one, gotten out of a couple. You could do whatever you want. And you could have actually day traded Netflix as a short every day since that occurred as well. But the day trade I reviewed here in this class was the actual day of the Thursday. But again, one system, one good gap, that is all you need, okay? It's all you need and you have to get it and you get it right and you just go for it so here this was from today um actually this was at the close so this this shows where this was i don't know what the exact low was it looks like it came down to 306 something and change so here was the day thursday friday big sell off here again i thought this was a great exit for the for for the majority of the puts but if you held any into the following week here's monday and here's Tuesday, and there's where it went, boop, okay. So again, nice move here, nice move here to the downside for Netflix, and a beautiful, beautiful call. Again, I'm looking for institutional money, but it's the gap itself. So I see the gap, I see the gap. Again, the stock closed here Wednesday night, it was up here around 352, or 362, sorry. Then open here in the morning around 325, closed here, gap down. And I rated it using my system to determine, hey, wait a minute, this puppy's going to fall. And I'm predicting. That's what I do. I predict. I predict the direction that the stock's going to go. Any questions from anyone here so far tonight? So it's very, very interesting. When you're doing this, you know, a lot of people want to trade per, per quantity of share size, but I'm always looking at the money of the risk per trade to stay consistent with it. So I might call a trade and I might say five by 30. Well, that's 25 cents. But, you know, you have to figure, okay, 25 cents times however many shares I want. That's your risk. 
And if you, you can't say, oh, I'm gonna take 5,000 shares every time I take a trade. No, because your stop may not be 25 cents, which is actually a small stop, okay? And that would be a $2,500 risk. And if you don't wanna risk you know, more than that, then you have to be careful. So it's very important to have a calculator, I think, next to you when you're trading, or be good with math in your head. I'm very good with math in my head very quickly, and I tend to round the numbers when I'm doing things because it makes it easier for me. And again, this isn't an exact science, but it has to be pretty close because if you take a trade and you wanna risk 500, and all of a sudden you really risk 2,500, well, that's really gonna screw you up because what if that's the one trade that loses? Do you see what I'm saying? Any questions? Anyways, you can trade anywhere in the world. So that's very important. I have people in different countries that trade in different time zones. Two of the people I talked to today on the, on the Pacific uh, time zone on the West Coast in California. So we start trading at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'm in New York. But again, if you're on the West Coast, that's 6.30 a.m., depending on what time of the year it is. And again, if you're in Europe, then you're well ahead. It's the afternoon or even evening in some countries. So you have to be able to block out the time between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern time to trade. I'm gonna go over one other trade here. This was a market trade. This was a diamonds out from, gosh, I think this was two weeks ago now. Yeah, this was a nice, this was a nice call. A nice easy peasy rally that happened that lifted and it's happened pretty quickly too. So on Wednesday, I called the 270 calls. This was a long that expired last week, but you didn't have to hold it to then. It just moved right up. So I called it on the Wednesday here. The 270 calls, here was Wednesday, and it went right up. Boom, boom, boom. It just followed through. This was two weeks ago. So you take the train, rallies, boom. You could have got out of it here, or you could have held it to here. Another nice call. This is a long where I am seeing the bullish money come in, the stock's getting bought up, okay? Very nice trade. Advanced trader risk and beginner trader risk are important because it depends the size of your account. Say you open up a starter account and you have $2,000 in an options account. Well, again, $650 risk, if you could afford that, you would have paid 130, five contracts, that's not nothing. That's basically equates to 500 shares. Exit at three, profit $850, that's a good profit. Risk 650 uh, and you can make 850. So if you had a $2,000 account, you could have done this trade and guess how much you would have had in the account once you're done. Your account would have went from 2,000 to 2,850 just in one trade. Again, hitting it specific 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 okay very important to just take trades hold the conviction go through the process and again an advanced trader risk you could have piled it on with this one this was i thought pretty cheap a dollar 30 50 contracts 6500 exit at three 8500 profit now again this is an advanced risk Again, return on investment for both of these, whether it's beginner or advanced, is the same. It's more than 100%. When you're risking 6,500 and you're making 8,500, that is a good trade. Your goal was only to make 6,500. You made an extra 2,000, or whatever the case may be over here, same principle. You risk 650, your goal is to make 650, you make an extra 200 bucks. Any questions here so far? Quiet group tonight, no questions. I see some familiar faces, Leo, Boom Boom. I hope someday some of you do the class before I stop teaching it, honestly. Some of you have been following me for so long. I talked to a gentleman today, one of the gentlemen that called me. Two years it took him to call me, picked up a phone. He's been following me since 2017. I think, you know, I think once you're bitten by the trading bug, it bites you. And it's just a function of when are you gonna jump in. For me, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm very confident. So when I see something that I wanna do, I just go for it. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be TV, it could be trading, whatever. I just jump right in, head first, with my whole self. But it's definitely one of those things where, you know, if you're not a confident person, you can become one. You can learn confidence. I think I was, you know, raised this way or born this way, I don't know. But um, you know, you can you can learn confidence. 
it's something that that helps. And I think I think one of the important things about my program is and being in the live trading room with me is I try to help people's confidence by showing them that they can do it. Because there's nothing more that helps confidence more in trading than being green, 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 green. The more consistent, and it's not even the amount, it is the consistency. When you're green Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, week after week, when you're green every week, it, that builds your confidence. And then you start to realize that you can do it. I think a lot of people are skeptics. They're skeptical, skeptical that anyone can make money in the market, or maybe they're skeptical that they can't. They think that they can't, that maybe other people can, but they can't. You have to do something to turn it around. If you are a skeptic and if you don't think you can make money, then why are you trading? And many, many people are trading. They may not be trading this type of size we've been talking about today, but they're trading. They're trading and they're trading actively and they're losing. Even if it's small amounts, it adds up. You just, you figure, I mean, even if you're losing 300 bucks a week by the end of the year, that adds up. So it's 15 grand. So, I mean, you have to take, in my opinion, it seriously if you want to do well. And if you're going to waste any time at all, then you got to take it seriously. Galahad's laughing. What did I say? Fit Tech is listening. Good stuff. Thank you. Did I say something funny that I missed? Oh, that I was born this way? Is that what I said? Um, anyways... Working for yourself is good. It's good. It's fun. In the summer, again, weather right now is super duper hot in New York, which I don't mind. But I mean, if you had to work in a cramped office and go trek back and forth in the sub subway in 99 degrees and this humidity, you know, that's not that much fun. I'm in my apartment in the air conditioning every day, trading in the morning. So I'm telling you, working for yourself is so much better, so much better than actually working for someone else. But again, the confidence, the confidence to do it. And again, that's something that you can build just because you don't have confidence today doesn't mean you're doomed. Part of it is the information, learning the information in the class. That helps build your confidence. Taking trades live, making real money, that helps build your confidence, okay? And for some people, that takes days. For some people, it takes weeks. Your confidence has to start from where you're at right now and build it up. And I think the first step in that is recognizing that you, you, you need a boost and, and asking for help and say, this is something that I realize that I have to work on within myself. I'm going to do better about it. Just like if you had any other problem, say you were smoking and you want to quit. Say you were drinking too much and you want to quit. Say you want to lose weight. Any, any goal that you have, a, a personal goal for your health or your well-being, the best thing you could do is just be honest and say, I have got to become more confident. I'm going to work on this and get better. And that's okay, all right? It doesn't, it's not demeaning to you to recognize that you have something that you need to work on for self-improvement, okay? But you can do this. And I think that's, that's something that, over the course of time and having the business for, like I said, seven going on eight years, I've taught people to realize that they can do it. The longer that they're with me, the more they get it. Whether they're doing options, whether they're doing day trades, some people are doing both. Uh, some people have a preference. It's the same system either way. But I definitely like the in and out day trades of the morning quickly. Right now it's earnings season, like I said, and we're very, very active. Now I didn't do anything today because it was on TV and I was up in the middle of the night. So I was up at 2 a.m., came back after I was on Fox News and came back and crashed for a little bit. But tomorrow morning, we're going to do something. I do not know what it is. Like I said, if you want a trading room trial, just email me. But I like that focus on the time right into the open for myself. So the benefits if you want to do this is you can work for yourself. You can work only one hour a day. And again, this is the active day trades, and you can take vacations when you want. I don't know when you're going to fully make all the money that you want but i know that you can using my system and that is powerful and that is powerful just the thought that you could do this just think about it for a minute like i was thinking about something this has nothing to do with trading i have some other big dreams for myself and i recently found out about something that i could do myself it's a massive undertaking huge huge thing that i realized that i could do for myself it's going to cost a lot of money but it would develop a dream that i have but I'm so excited, even though it's a massive, massive project, you, I can't explain to you how excited I am about the thought that I actually could do it. Once you realize that you actually can do something, that's your dream, it totally changes your whole perspective. 
And I'm one of those people that I don't think that there's anything that's too big to overcome. But this is such a small thing. You're sitting at home with your computer and all you have to do is do one trade a day. How difficult can it be? Well, it's very difficult for many people because they have no clue what to do. So that is where my system comes into play. I pinpoint the one stock. You only need to do one stock a day. You only need to do one trade. And what if you do one stock a day, one trade, and what if it loses? Then you got one loss. Not a million losses, one. Get up tomorrow and see what we get the next day. I mean, if you are so damaged from past mistakes and failures or issues like discipline or whatever, do one trade a day. You will, you will do well. But you have to apply the system. And again, I think being in the trading room is a, it's a positive support system for, for new people too. But day trading produces income week by week. It's not investing. You're chunking it, chunking it, chunking it, chunking it. And again, you have to desire to do this. You have to have a passion to do it. You have to have a desire to do it. Part of taking the class and learning it is, again, having the passion to want to understand it so you can start to make real money. When you get to the point where you can take a trade, you can make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in one trade, whether it's an option or a day trade, it turns everything around for you. Again, to be able to double, triple, quadruple your account in a very short period of time, and people are doing that with me. So the fact is you have to decide that this is something that you want to get good at and want to get passionate about. You have to want it because nobody's going to do it for you. There's not some guy walking around that's ringing the doorbell and saying, do you want to trade the market today? The market does not care. If you never take a trade again, the market will carry on. All right? You have to want it. You have to want the money from the market. You have to have the drive. If you have the drive and have the passion, you know, I'm here to support people through my class to do it. Many people are interested in trading and they trade, but they are not passionate about it and they don't have the drive to make the money. It's the motivation. And without that, you're going to lose because there's too many people out there who are motivated and they got a heck of a lot of motivation and they're good and they're smart and they're intelligent and they know what to do, okay? Just like I was telling you about the Netflix. There were day traders that were buying Netflix and we shorted it and it was a really nice trade, okay? So think about that. You wanna be on the side with the smart people, with the rich people, okay? And that is not most day traders, quite frankly. I'm in a special category, I'm an anomaly. Let's talk about financial freedom. This means something different for everyone. It certainly means something different for someone that lives in New York, for someone that lives in, uh, you know, Ohio, okay? It's, it's different no matter where you are. Everybody has different goals and different dreams, and some people love their career, and they, have, they don't, they don't want to quit their job. They love what they do, but they want to make more money. They want to make more money, and this is something that, again, doesn't take a lot of hours a day. So I'm focused on one thing, and it doesn't matter what your goals are, but I do think it is important to know what you're doing this for. Why are you doing this? Do you want to supplement your income, or do you want this to just be your income? Or are you just want to buy something, or you just like trading, or you're retired, are you bored? I don't think being bored is a good reason to trade, though, to be honest with you, because you're putting your money at risk, and you have to take it seriously that you know what to do. And again, motivation, whether it's buying something, or whether it's switching careers, those are very motivating factors. Working for yourself, working from home, those are motivating factors. Okay, so pick the things that are gonna help motivate you to do it and to spend the money and spend the time, because it is time and it is money. It is all those things. Again, no one's knocking at the door just giving you everything in the world and all these great trades for free. Any questions? So we'll talk a little bit here at the end. What I teach in the class is my rating system. It's a 26-point checklist. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, a big move in the day, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern time, and precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-to-reward target potential because that is something that I'm really looking for as well. I want to see the move in something that it's going to go. And again, I said this earlier, chunk it out. Chunk, 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 okay? I've called some huge trades this year. I don't know when the next one will be. I know if you join, you have a chance in getting it. And if you don't, you don't. I've been talking to some people about the gap options letter for the last few months. Well, they've missed, they've missed so, so many great trades. 
So, you know, again, you have to be motivated to want to make money and to want to trade. And if you are, you'll, you're a great candidate for any one of my programs or subscriptions or the class. I'm highly motivated in what I do. That comes through in my teaching, it comes through in the trading room, it comes through in my communication uh, to my students and clients. But anyways, think about what I said about sizing. If you're bad with math, just get one of those little cheapo calculators and have it next to you, okay? Think about what you're risking. Are you gonna do one trade a day? You're gonna do two. Be consistent with your sizing, okay? Make sure to use stops. Again, that's the protection, it's the insurance. So in my class, I teach a course, it's called the Golden Gap. The Golden Gap system is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. And the 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. And that's how I know to do BYND versus Netflix, how to go long and how to short. But the main point of tonight is that one strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people know all kinds of things about fundamentals and all kinds of crap. I'm not interested in that stuff and it's not gonna help me make money so I don't care. I don't care. If I see Netflix and I rate the gap and the gap rate's good, then I'm doing it. Same thing with BYND. I don't care, whatever, okay? Doesn't matter. What matters is price, because that's how you're gonna make money. You get something at a good price in the right direction, you're gonna profit. And that's all that this is for. That is the reason we're doing this. Yes, it's fun, it's true, but it's fun when you make money. It's not fun when you lose. So learn how to read institutional money and price patterns in gaps. You don't need to do anything else. This is what you would come to me and I would teach you, okay? If you are motivated to make money, you will understand that that's gonna help you do well and you will take that energy and that fuel and that passion and drive to be profitable, to turn it into something good for yourself. It's something that even if you're not there right now, you will get there. JK asks if I have a payment plan. No, I do not. If you wanna do the class, you must pay for the class up front. And if you wanna sign up for the options letter, you must pay for the options letter up front. So that is an investment for you. The class is $59.99 at six grand. And the options letter currently is $49.99, but that price is going up to $59.99 as well. I think once you become a member, whether you do the class or join the letter, you the, the price will be irrelevant to you by that point because you'll see how good this system works. But you do have to have the money to pay for it up front. Um, Kathy is bringing up something about a credit card plan. One thing I do allow is if you want to put it on more than one credit card, you can. So if the price of the class is six grand, you need to split it up on three cards or something, you can do that. PayPal does have something if you purchase something, gosh, I don't remember if it's over $100 or over $1,000, I don't know. You have to Google it. Then you're allowed to apply for PayPal credit. You pay the sock swoosh for the product or service. Um, and then the PayPal splits it over six months. You have to be approved with PayPal. Just from what my knowledge of that program is, <coughs> you have to have, I think, a, a FICO of around 680, if that helps you know or not. It's helpful in the sense that they don't charge interest and they split it up over six months and you pay for the product in full upfront. But I think you need to run a 680 FICO, okay? Remember that old saying that's out there, cash is king when the streets are bloody. You know, I only accept payment on a credit card, but if you, if that's the only way you can do it, then that's what you do, okay? And you throw yourself in. I mean, it's so many years now since I've started trading. I mean, it just, it's like a, it just seems like so long ago that I was switching careers. Uh, I mean, 2008 was just so long ago, but at the time that I switched, I, I was doing mortgages. I knew I wanted to get out. I literally was willing to do almost anything to get out. <laughs> like I wanted a different career so badly. I hated my job. I was so miserable. Like I, I was willing to try anything new. So the fact that I was doing something new and I did pay for one class and I had to put up money to trade in a trading account to trade in, I did. It was like I was willing to, I was willing to take any risk. I wanted something different with my life. And and I know this is hard to explain. It, it is hard to explain because, uh, 
you know, again, you have to you have to think things through sometimes, but don't think things through too much. I don't know if that makes any any sense. As human beings, we overthink things. It's it's one of human beings' greatest faults. You, people overthink things. They think and think and think and think and think and they overthink it. The best the best example I can do to to give you an example is um is love. If you have to think hard if you're in love with someone the answer is no you're not and if you go through life where you are in this space where you are in touch with yourself and you're a confident person and you have a high level of intuition and you and you trust your own decisions you will not overthink things and you will you will you will glide through life versus going through the struggle of everyday life i don't know if that came across the way that i wanted it to but the more, uh, the wiser that I become, the more I'm realizing that that is true. And if anyone has ever spent even one day in the live trading room with me, which some of you have, some of you have it in the open houses and some of you are students that are here tonight, you know that the best thing about being with me, the best thing about knowing me is the way that I am in the live moment when the market opens. And that is something that I don't, I, I just do. There's no thinking. It's, it's me in the moment when I'm seeing the pre-market, when I'm seeing the gap like Netflix Live, when I'm making the call. It's, yes, my brain is working, but it's instantaneous and it's a knowing. And that is something that if I could bottle it up and sell it like a perfume, I would charge millions of dollars and you'd, you'd all be rich. But I don't know how to do that. So the, bet, the closest thing is you do my class. You sign up for the program, you follow me, and you develop that within yourself because overthinking kills the cat. It does with trading and it does in life because if you're afraid to take risk and you're afraid to take chances and you overthink things, you will ruin it just like, just like with love, just like with love. And even if you know that you love someone and you don't have to think about whether or not you love them, you can completely destroy a relationship and kill it by overthinking it, by trying too hard are forcing a situation uh, that the other person that's just not, it's just not whatever it happens to be, whether it's going on a date, whether it's moving in together, I could use a million different examples, having kids or whatever. You can, you can create a difficult situation and ruin a relationship, even if you're in love with them, by overthinking something. Does this make sense? I know Galahad understands what I'm talking about because he's, he's been there. He, he goes there and he leaves and he comes back and then he leaves and he goes again. So don't overthink. In fact, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use it as an example, Galahad, because I'm gonna pull up this trade that you didn't do. Hold on. So Galahad did not do this trade. Woo! It's this is Facebook. What's happening right now? What is happening right now? Facebook just fell off the planet. The market just fell. All right, I'll look at that later. Uh, I'm gonna use Galahad as an example. So I called a great trade. Galahad didn't do it. He overthought it. Um, no, BYND, I'm sorry, did I say Facebook? No, I didn't mean Facebook. I called a trade yesterday. It was so late that I'm sure Galahad wasn't the only one that didn't do it. So I called uh, the 200 calls for the stock. Now I know this is, here, let, in fact, let me look, pull up the intraday because maybe this will show this in. I want to know the way the market's flying off the planet right now. I called this trade. I don't remember the exact time. In fact, let me look up the exact time. Let's be exact. It was a great trade. Galahad didn't do it because he overthought it. He overthunk it. And it was a huge trade. <laughs> Uh, talk about not overthinking things like like I was saying that I I don't when it comes to trading. Uh, yesterday was the 22nd, 1235. 1235 in the, this was late. Twelve thirty five. It's like around here. Does everyone see Netflix? It was in this, here. I called a long, this is a call, out to Friday. I mean, it had less than just a couple of days. This was Monday. I called it for an expiration day of the 26th. I called the 200 calls. 
Galahad didn't do it because he thought it was too too late. It worked. Not only did it work, it ran up and was double what, in other words, it was more than 100% profit. If you paid four, if you paid five, if you paid six, no matter what you paid, it was 100% return on investment. Because you took it there, you could have got out of it with some money here and yesterday, and guess what? You woke up this morning, boop, and there it was, shot up like a rocket, ran up to 208.48. So this trade here was not too late, and Galahad didn't do it because he thought it was too late. He overthunk it. He thought, 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 and he didn't do it. And the money went, woo, and he didn't get it. Now he's doing good, but I just want to, this is an example of overthinking. Uh, but 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 again, you, you you didn't do it. You, you didn't say too late. You got smacked with a lost trade. Well, first of all, the Netflix three hundred puts worked. So the reality is that either way, say you did them and you killed Netflix. The Netflix puts with a loss. Say you did, which is what you did. What does that have to do with this trade here? Nothing. What does taking Netflix puts, taking the 300 puts last week, killing them, killing them with a loss, and what does that have to do with this? But I mean, it's still, you still, you're still not answering the question, what it has to do with this? You used one trade to determine then what you're doing with another trade which didn't make any sense, unless you're not telling me the truth that you missized yourself in some regard. Now, I understand you took the Netflix puts expiring the 19th for the 300 instead of the 26th, but either way, if you did the 19th, took it, then killed it, you could have retaken the 26s, they worked, and again, this has nothing to do with BYND. Uh, and all the other Netflixes for the for the one for the 19th for the 325s and the and the 26 work. So I still your explanation doesn't hold water, Galahad. You flat out did not do this trade because you were overthinking it. And even in the even right now you're overthinking it. You're trying to rationalize overthinking why you didn't do this because of a tra another trade that was a loss. Again, that makes no sense. You're overthinking it. Unless you're only allowed to do two trades a week or whatever, unless you have a limit. But I don't I don't think you do. I don't think you do. So I you know, you overthought this and the money just went. But overall you're doing good. But this was just like a once off. And this was another great read to see that this would I knew this would I knew when I saw this it was gonna go over the high. I knew it. I just knew it. I didn't know if it was gonna I, I could have done it yesterday. I literally called at 12.30 and I, I talked to a couple people. I said, well, make a go there today. I'm just letting you know. It didn't, but it did today. It did, the, it did it today. Anyways, let me just see here, people. Why is the market selling off? Does anyone know here? Um, selling off after hours. I don't want to get too distracted, but I'm kind of interested to see here why. Again, I'm not, I'm not in the market long right now, but I would like to know. Um, and then I'll go back to the webinar because there's nothing that I know of tonight that should be collapsing this market. Is it a trade thing? Does anybody know? DOJ confirms it is reviewing the practices of market leading online platforms. Could that be it? DOJ will open up antitrust review of large tech companies. Ah, uh, that's it. All right, that's it. Hold on. Let's look. That is it. Let's look at Google. We got to look at this right now here. This is gapping right now here live. That's why Facebook's down. That's why the market's down. <gasps> wow, that was unexpected. And this is two nights before everything reports. Holy crap, Aronis. Facebook's tomorrow night. And Google and Amazon are Thursday night, and the DOJ just came out with that, and these things are going to crash tomorrow morning. Here's let's look. 11.32. Wow, that's not devastating. That's why these are all down. Yep. 
I knew, I knew something. 526. Well, these stocks are gapping down. These are rateable tomorrow. I don't, I don't know if we're going to do them or not. It's way too early to even look at these. But let's just look. 1974. Yeah, these are down. So that's why this is a pretty big bar. But again, I, I don't know what I'm doing with this. But that's interesting. So tech is down. Oh, let's look at Netflix. Tech is down. This is just down a little bit. Tech is down because the DOJ is going to investigate them. But we knew that anyways. That was coming. That was coming anyways. All right, let's get back to the lecture here. Anyways, one system. We trade in the morning between 9.30 and 10. Usually, I've talked about passion, your desire, motivation. If you're interested in the class, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. Class is this weekend, July 27th to 28th. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time cost the class is $59.99 U.S. dollars. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Deadline to sign up is Friday. So think about this. Education is something you're giving it to yourself. It's an investment in yourself. That's what it is, okay? I'm offering for earnings season one year free in the live trading room with the class. Friday is the deadline for that. So if you want to do the class this weekend, you get one year free in the room, which is a great support system. Um, this expires on the 26th. Any questions from anyone about anything? Boy, this is really going to pull the market down. These tech stocks falling tonight. I'm glad I'm not in the market long. Well, I knew the volatility was coming this year. I keep anticipating it, and it hasn't really come yet. Maybe this is how it's setting up. Interesting. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? If you're interested in the class this weekend, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. It is definitely a great time to trade with me. Whether you do the options and sign up for the options newsletter, which is a great product, there's no prerequisite for that. You don't have to do the class to sign up for the letter or you wanna just join the room. Um, you must do the class to join the room, but you get the room free if you do the class this weekend. Galahad, you've been doing great. You got to move forward. Stop thinking about past trades or losses or mistakes or anything. You need to move forward and get out of your head. You're doing really good there. You better turn this around like right by tomorrow morning. Any questions from anyone? Well, we actually ended up managed to end on time and I got distracted. So that's pretty big news tonight though. Very interesting. Um, I usually teach the class about once a month. Once a month. All right, great, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. I am getting ready for bed. I've been up since 2 a.m. <laughs> I will see you all bright and early tomorrow morning, some of you. And the rest, email me if you're interested in the class. Have a great day. I know. Long day. 20 hours. <laughs>